Texas Tech is looking for payback. Last season, Arizona State's Kalen Bellage ran all over them, scoring eight times on the way to a victory. This season, the Red Raiders are once again at the top of college football's most potent passing offenses. It's time to stop talking and find out which of these dynamic offenses will prevail tonight on Fox College Football. From the Pac-12, the Arizona State Sun Devils. From the Big 12, the Texas Tech Red Raiders. They played last year in Tempe. Tonight, they play at Jones AT&T Stadium in Lubbock, Texas. It's great to have you with us with Brian Baldinger. I'm Mark Falwell. This game, because of weather, is going to start one hour later. But, Brian, that's okay. It just gave us an hour to get more pumped up for what's going to be a great game. If it's anything like last year, when Arizona State beat Texas Tech 68-55, a lot of the same cast of characters are back, including running back Kalen Balazs, who had an historic performance for the Sun Devils. But Texas Tech does have a different quarterback. Pat Mahomes is gone. Nick Shimanek will make his second start tonight, Brian. And let's get to know Nick Shimanek because he started two weeks ago against Eastern Washington. The ball barely touched the ground. He didn't miss a pass until late in the second quarter. And he is an accurate thrower. He's a good leader. He's not the mobile guy that Patrick Mahomes was, but that's okay. He wants to slice you up from the pocket, and he's got a ton of receivers and good running backs to get the ball to. 13 players, as a matter of fact, caught passes from him in the game uh, against Eastern Washington two weeks ago. Now, Kalen Balazs and his wonderful performance last year against Arizona State. Well, it was more than wonderful. It was record setting. He scored eight touchdowns, Mark, seven of them on the Wildcat formation that they call Sparky. And he is big. He's 230 pounds. He can catch. He can block. But Arizona State's got to get the running game going. So far in two games, if they've really struggled. They're moving the offensive line right now. They're moving guys to get better players up there. So watch for Caleb Blige tonight to get this running game ignited for the Sun Devils. A great crowd is ready for the kickoff of this game. It's just a couple of minutes away. But right now, we'll hear from our sideline reporter tonight, the great Leslie McCaslin. Leslie? Thanks, Mark. Well, guys, when we talk about Texas Tech, we always want to talk about the offense. But last year, they lost two games in which they scored 55 points, and this matchup was one of them. So when some of the seniors had their exit interviews, they told Cliff Kingsbury that they would like for him to be more involved on defense, and that's something that their head coach really took to heart. He said he wanted to be more of a sounding board for them this year, especially because six of the teams they'll face in the Big 12 run a similar offense. So, guys, now we'll just have to see if it makes a difference. Well, we'll see that defense for Texas Tech on the field to start the game tonight, Leslie, because Arizona State has won the toss. They have elected to receive to start tonight's game. There's Todd Graham, the coach for the Arizona State Sun Devils. Now, he's got a great connection to the state of Texas. He's a native from Mesquite, North Mesquite High School, just outside of Dallas, 52 years old, longtime high school football coach in Texas, including for an historic a legendary program the way they've gotten on a run recently the Allen Eagles this is his fourth different collegiate head coaching job now in his sixth season with Arizona State the struggle specifically for Arizona State on offense has been running the football the sixth lowest average per game in FBS at just 61 yards that's Michael Barton he punted last year he's been handling the kickoff duties for Texas Tech. Kalen Balazs is one of the players back deep to receive for Arizona State, along with Kyle Williams. At about 6 o'clock tonight, a heavy West Texas thunderstorm came through. Lightning, some serious cloud-to-ground lightning, high winds, heavy rain for about 15 or 20 minutes. The field was cleared. Fans made their way to the concourse. Teams went back to the locker room. The storm stopped a little bit before 7 o'clock. The all-clear had the teams back on the field by around 7.20. And now here, uh, exactly one hour later than initially scheduled, the game kicks off with the leg of Michael Barton angling this to the left and out of bounds. So Arizona State will have the good fortune of fine field position to start the game because of the kickoff out of bounds. Arizona State, one and one, will start at the 35-yard line with Manny Wilkins at quarterback. Two games this year, four touchdowns, no picks. Threw for a little bit over 2,300 yards last year. Low snap to him. 
An underneath throw, and it's caught on the left-hand side by Nikhil Harry. And Harry picks up the first down. A run up near midfield, and definitely one of the players to watch for the Arizona State Sun Devils offense. Well, he, he wears number one, and he's their number one wide receiver. Uh, he returns right now as a, just a sophomore out of Chandler, Arizona, but they feature him in a lot of ways. Gain of 12 yards with his 12th catch of the year. But nothing doing on first down for Arizona State as Jordan Brooks leads the way inside. And Ja'Shawn Johnson will be one of the players to watch tonight for the Texas Tech defense. Well, he's such a playmaker, and he returns. He forced a fumble last week. He's always around the ball. He's the leader of the secondary that has been rebuilt. He's the only returning starter from a year ago. After a game of two on first down, Harry with his second catch. Harry is cut down to the 45-yard line of Texas Tech shy of the first down. Good hit delivered on the Texas Tech defense by Monte Dorsey, a safety from Cleveland, Mississippi, a junior. As you can see, Arizona State, they like to go up tempo. But a five-yard penalty turns this into third and six. Kyle Williams went in motion, and they'll throw it back to him, dumps it over the shoulder. Williams up near the first down marker, maybe stopped just a tiny bit short by Octavius Morgan. The junior corner from Greenwood, South Carolina, and Butler County Community College. So you're going to see Kyle Williams just kind of go in motion. They come back here, and they're going to flip it to him. Three guys are in on the tackle, including Morgan. Short of the first down, but there has been a roughing the passer penalty against Texas Tech. 15 yards and the automatic first down. To the Red Raider 29-yard line. Bouncing off the line after the initial contact. Short gain for Kalen Balazs on first down. Billy Napier just spent five years coaching with Nick Saban at Alabama. He's installed the entire Alabama offense, maybe too much. And then he spent years at Clemson with Dave O'Sweeney. So he has coached some of the finest, with some of the finest coaches, and coached some of the finest receivers in both places. This is the fourth all-time meeting between the Red Raiders and Sun Devils. Regular season wins for Arizona State in 1999 and 2016. 2013 Holiday Bowl win for Texas Tech in San Diego. Jordan Brooks leads a host of Texas Tech defenders on a run up the gut by Demario Richard. Well, Jordan Brooks led this team in tackles a year ago as a freshman. And he's a real middle linebacker now. Number one's going to come into your picture, but he's... There he is. He's lined up on the line of scrimmage. All of 240 pounds out of Houston. He looks like a middle... He looks like a middle linebacker. <laughs> Eli Howard helped out and got him low. And this is right around the spot on the field where on the last drive, the Texas Tech defense was able to deliver a stop on third down. Third down and six. A quick throw. Nikhil Harry has it, but he has nowhere to go. Jalen Lane, the first one there. And his ability to contain him in the open field, Brian, allowing the rest of his defensive mates to come in on the stop. No question. Here he is playing pump and run right here in the heel Harry. But he fights off the block here of Robertson, and he makes the tackle in the open field. And they are much better at corner this year with two Juco transfers, Murray and Lane, than they were at any point here in the last five years. Ruiz, the freshman, missed earlier from 41. That one is on the money. Ruiz, big-legged freshman, nails a 44-yard field goal. The first team to strike tonight is Arizona State with a field goal against David Gibbs' defense. Holding teams to field goals is a victory for Texas Tech and really a, a brand-new defense, a defense rebuilt with a lot of new players. A defense that surrendered an average of 43 points an FBS high last year, and also a defense that surrendered an FBS high 554 yards a game. Touchback on the kickoff, Nick Shimanek and the Texas Tech offense start at their own 23. He's a fifth-year senior from Mildred, Texas. Completed first 14 passes in his first start two weeks ago at Texas Tech's 56-10 win against FCS Eastern Washington. Justin Stockton will run the ball for the first time in the game. 
known for his speed, but Bryant lowers his head and is able to drive through contact of Christian Sam to pick up some yardage after contact to gain a five. Geeky QT, who we will see a lot tonight. We probably won't see him do that a lot, not no. bring in a pass, though. Well, he's their number one receiver. You'll see him inside. You'll see him outside. Caught a couple of touchdown passes from Shimanek in the first game two weeks ago, but they really like just his all-around game. And here is the up-tempo offense and a completion to Dylan Cantrell. Forward progress will give him the first down, even though he was pushed backward by Joey Bryant in corner. Cantrell is one of two wide receivers that are a captain on this team. A lot of leadership, a lot of seniors like Cantrell, been here a long time, excelling in the leadership department. 58 catches last year for Dylan Cantrell, five now this season. Texas Tech's first first down of the game. Puts them at the 38-yard line. Stockton has big play capability. But once again, we see him running through a tackle. And totes it up near the 45. Well, Stockton is a very capable guy. He's a senior in typical Texas Tech back. That went for six yards. Now it's a pitch and catch. To Cameron Batson along the sideline. And for the second straight time, Texas Tech converts the first down on their second down snap. In a stand-up defensive end position is A.J. Latu. And Shimanek faked the handoff, then faked the option pitch, and now he's just going to heave it out of bounds. First and ten will go for an incompletion. Well, that was just a read option where they're really faking it to Nisby inside, and then it's a quarterback option with... Stockton and Shimanek one-on-one, and they took the read away. That was a smart play by Shimanek just to throw it away. And the opener against Eastern Washington, Shimanek had four incompletions in 30 pass attempts. He already has three incompletions in six tries tonight. From midfield, an Arizona State 44-yard field goal on the last drive is the only scoring in the game. Pocket collapses, Shimanek goes. And it's caught. First down to the 35 yard line. Good throw over the middle to Kiki QT. Now we said Kiki QT is as close to a true number one receiver as they have, calling a lot of plays for him. Back to throw Shimanek. And falls down as he throws off his back foot. They make something out of it. Derek Willies catches a jump ball that will go for a gain of eight or nine yards. Not a first down, but very, very close to it for Derek Willies, the senior from San Bernardino, California. Try that in your backyard tomorrow. Throwing off your back foot, taking a hit, and still completing the pass. Jimnick showing us a lot of ability to extend plays here. Not, not that dissimilar from what we saw from Patrick Mahomes for three years. Mahomes, the 10th pick last spring in the NFL draft by the Kansas City Chiefs. A hole for Stockton. Bumps off one tackle, stays on his feet. First down easily inside the 20. Christian Sam ultimately brings down Justin Stockton, the junior from Cibolo Steel. How about Jack Anderson? The true freshman from Frisco, Texas at 6'5", 320 pounds. Starting in their right guard and maybe one of the best prospects they've had come through here in a long time. After the run of eight yards for Stockton, the senior. He will carry the ball again. They're in the red zone now. And Stockton is ultimately pulled down by D.J. Calhoun, who had 13 tackles in their opening win against New Mexico State. Well, he's their middle linebacker. He's the senior, and they can run from side to side. They gave up one bad play last week to San Diego State. They gave up a 95-yard run in the second quarter. Other than that, they did a good job of containing a pretty good offense. Rashad Penny was the player who had the big run last week for the Aztecs. He also caught a touchdown pass and returned to kickoff for a touchdown as well. It's a fly sweep for Kiki QT on second and four. He turns it upfield and will go untouched into the end zone. Texas Tech is on the board with a 12-yard touchdown run. Well, QT gets a touchdown, but he gets a lot of good blocks here. This one from Willies on the outside. If you're not catching the ball, you better be a good blocker. 
Crack back block there. Lead block by Trey King. The freshman. And QT gets his third touchdown of the season. And that looked like a Texas Tech drive. Before the opening game, Clayton Hatfield had picked up a knock, so Michael Uten handled the place-kicking duties. But Hatfield, the junior from Bernie, Texas, is back and on the field at his first extra point of 2017. Michael Barton with the kickoff. Dalen Milaj wants to run it out of the end zone. A couple of yards deep. Flashing through a hole. And it hit pretty hard outside the 25-yard line. Into the game and running back Demario Richard. Quarterback Manny Wilkins rolls and throws. And it's caught for a short gain by Ryan Jenkins, a transfer receiver from Tennessee. That was Jordan Brooks that was chasing him, though. He's been active so far. So much has been talked about this Texas Tech defense. We've mentioned a number of times, 68 points during the last year, but a lot of new personnel here. We're just trying to learn how to mesh together. Just a gain of a yard on the pass play. And a gain of a yard, perhaps two, if the spot is generous. Dakota Allen and Jordan Brooks at linebacker bring down Demario Richard. And when we talked to David Gibbs about who he was most worried about as a running back, it was Demario Richard. And the man they call D. Rich just got shut down for two yards. Pretty good job stuffing the run early for David Gibbs' defense. David Gibbs in his third year as defensive coordinator at Texas Tech. And he said they didn't sit idle during the bye week. They, they, got after, they got after it for a whole week. A lot of scrimmaging, working on getting off blocks. Empty backfield. Pressure up the middle. Low throw incomplete. Tony Jones with big-time pressure and a low pass that Wilkins could not deliver on time and on target to Kalen Balazs. Well, Tony Jones, we've mentioned him. New to this program. Here he is, number nine, just coming on a blitz right up the middle. They don't pick him up. The center and right guard were unable to get to him, and they're moving around. Freed him up on that pressure on third down, and anytime you can hit a quarterback and affect the throw, that's a great play for the defense. Michael Sleep Dalton from Australia. Hunting tonight with his preferred right foot after kicking left foot due to an injury in the first couple of games. Nice little return. Cameron Batson doesn't want to give up until he's sure he is down. And he is. With 2.40 left in the first quarter. From the 28-yard line, Texas Tech's third offensive series. And space to Justin Stockton. And that's where he wants to be. And that's where he is. A lot of space. Into Arizona State territory before DJ Calhoun is able to run him down. But it's at the 45 of the Sun Devils. Well, Stockton just catching a flare route on the outside, but nice block again by the receiver, Cantrell. Officially at the 46, so call the game 26. Shimonek throwing. A wide open Dylan Cantrell. Marker's down. Cantrell is still on his feet. Could be first and goal if the play stands. But at the 38-yard line, there's a marker down. Receiver, defense number 37. The penalties decline. First down. Brian, that's on Joey Bryant for Arizona State. Joey Bryant's a great story. He's a 25-year-old kid that came here at a junior college. He was a high jumper. A seven-foot high jumper has been converted at a junior college here to corner. They like what he can do and his talent, but guilty of a hold on the outside. At the 11, after a 35-yard pass play to Dylan Cantrell. Desmond Nisby is in at running back. A flare out to Batson. Oh, Batson, what a move! What a move! Cameron Batson put him in the blender and pushed Mix. If you were playing a video game, you couldn't have moved Cameron Batson any better than they just did. He picks up a great block on the outside by Willies again. Just a hitch pass to the outside. There's Willie's 11 getting the block, but there's the, the back up, the hitch step, and then the burst. And what did Cliff Kingsbury tell us about him yesterday? The smartest, the nastiest, and the fastest player on the team. 
What a trio. Yeah. They said he could make more money outside of football than he ever could playing football. He's that type of a leader. Could be a quarterback in Texas Tech. <laughs> Good offense for it. Yeah. And a lot of places to go with the football. Taking a knee in the end zone is Kalen Balage. And running back Kalen Balage. And motion was Jenkins. And from the 25 yard line, Mike Glenn Thomas with a big hit on the running play. Yeah, big Mike in here, stuffing the run, getting good penetration against a rebuilt offensive line here. Really did it. Cole Cabral is the new center. He went from left tackle to center. Zach Robertson has replaced. Cole at left tackle and a new tight end in there. The brawl is a sophomore from Rancho Cucamonga, California, and a low snap back to Wilkins. Arizona State had a problem getting on it, and ultimately it's Texas Tech who gets on it. The first turnover. I just mentioned that Cole Cabral is the new center. And when you go from left tackle to center, your first job is to make sure you get the ball back in shotgun. You get the ball back in a snap, and this ball comes low to Manny Wilkins. And then the jumble was on, and there comes Big Mike Thomas out with it. There's a whole lot of, whole lot of Big Mike there. We'll see how aggressive Cliff is right away. Sometimes after a turnover, he'll go strike right away and try to put it right in the end zone on the first play after a takeaway. And that first play is at the Sun Devils 22 yard line and it's in the flat to Justin Stockton and it read well and Stockton pays a heavy price. Alani Latu and Christian Sam uh, belted him out of bounds. Well, Christian Sam is one of those linebackers that's got to fly around and make those kind of hits for him. Big test here for this defense to slow the Red Raiders down. Officially a gain of three. Sheminek, and down he goes. Pressure off the edge. That's the corner, Joey Bryant. Corner blitz that time from Phil Bennett. And they were going to kind of fake this to Stockton going this way here and then come back. There's no, nothing back there. Everything was going to the left. He had no protection, and Phil Bennett with the first big blitz getting home that time. Loss of 10 yards, now back to the 29. Late first quarter, Texas Tech after a turnover. But they've gone backwards here due to Arizona State's 11th sack of the season and two games in a quarter. Shimanek now with a heave for the end zone. And it's juggling and caught. Dylan Cantrell, great concentration. It took a perfect pass from Shimanek to beat great coverage that time to Dylan Cantrell. And this Nick Shimanek is having some fun. I mean, here he is on the outside, and he's working against Joey Bryant. We just talked about him. The coverage is not bad. Look at this throw. He gets his foot right down before the back end of the goal line or the end zone. Out of the hold of John De La Garza, the extra point for Hatfield is good. Just like Cameron Batson had eight receiving touchdowns last year and has his first of 2017 tonight. Dylan Cantrell had eight last year and his first of 2017 tonight. He gets that foot down with possession. The yeah. coverage was great by Brian. Stretched arm. Look at how it's when they say it's a game of inches. Yes. It might be centimeters. It was that tight. Arizona State's got to get it together right now. Snap. And it was McCollum back in. McCollum back in at center, so 
I mean, they made the change because they wanted better run blockers up front, but McCollum in there right now with back-to-back -back terrible snaps from the center. The first one was Cabral. That one was McCollum. And everything is pointing in a positive direction right now for Texas Tech at home against Arizona State. And in front, 21-3 after the first quarter. Stay with us for more coverage of Fox College football. Texas Tech, 21, Arizona State, 3. There was a fumbled snap on the last play of the first quarter. A second down and nine. Under pressure, Wilkins. He'll stand in and throw it down the sideline. And there's a marker coming in. Incompletion for Jalen Harvey. Coverage by Ja'Shawn Johnson. Kind of a jump ball type throw. Pass interference. Defense number seven. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Good matchup between Harvey and Ja'Shawn Johnson. Uh, the defensive penalties have bailed Arizona State out early in his game right now. And week one against Eastern Washington, Texas Tech, 11 penalties committed for 120 yards. Three for 40 tonight. And this has really tilted things in Arizona State's favor field position-wise. But this one is Balazs. Oh, strong. Good run by Balazs. Stayed on his feet after being hit at the line of scrimmage, which was the Arizona State 41. And Balazs at 230 pounds doesn't go down easily. And a big run as a result. Well, he, Dakota Allen, 40, has him right there. And he can't bring him down. He broke two tackles behind the line of scrimmage. And you can see when Balazs gets ahead of steam up, difficult to bring down. For 14 yards. Allen. Wilkins rolling. And Wilkins has some space in front of him to run. He's able to make a cut and get outside the corner. DJ Polite Bray and will step out of bounds, picking up a first down. Run goes down to the 34. Now tonight's Coyote Tractor game summary. And the first quarter, it was all quite clearly Texas Tech. Well, you can see the 163 yards passing for Texas Tech. Nick Shimanek picking up where he left off two weeks ago. Ball of the 16. And on the end around, a stutter step move made by Ryan Newsom. And a big hit along the sideline and another marker down. And you see Deshaun Johnson, how upset he is after the fact. Newsom is playing for the first time this season tonight after being dinged up and missing the first two games against New Mexico State at San Diego State. Well, Deshaun Johnson is the enforcer back there. Personal foul. Defense number seven, late hit out of bounds. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Four penalties, three of them resulting in first downs on the drive. Here, the hit. Well, his foot was out of bounds. Isn't it? I think it's the afters, yeah. Brian. Yeah, and then it's just they're throwing him down, just the extra right there that they flagged him on. That won't take the aggressiveness out of Deshaun Johnson, though, but this is a defense right now that is just completely giving this to the Sun Devils. There have been four penalties on the drive. Now, it's a running play on first and goal. Kept by Manny Wilkins, the quarterback inside the five. Down near the three. Four penalties on this drive. Three of them giving him first downs. His Manny Wilkins got to clean the clean the windshield right now. Defensive holding, defensive pass interference. And two, unsportsman con, unsportsmanlike conduct, Brian, twice. Yeah. This is where Arizona State had so much success the year ago, this part of the field. They aren't going with the sparky formation yet. They're throwing the fade, and it is put into the hands of Kyle Williams for a touchdown. It's a first score in terms of a touchdown tonight for Arizona State. Kyle Williams with the grab in the corner of the end zone. And against good coverage by Jalen Lane in the end zone. Just one of those 50-50 balls, but Kyle Williams was aggressive for it. There's Lane on him. All right, does he squeak? Wow. That's a great job of hanging on to that ball with one arm as Lane was trying to get it out. Great catch by Kyle Williams and so needed for Arizona State. 
He only caught seven passes as a freshman last year. Kyle Williams now has eight receptions this season. Six already coming into play tonight. Two catches tonight. This one, a very tough touchdown grab in coverage to give Arizona State their first seven points of the night. Arizona State got a lifeline with all of the penalties on that last drive, and that is a big boost in their touchdown drive, Baldy. Kyle Williams' three-yard catch caps it off. 47 yards in penalties and a 75-yard drive. Yeah, three automatic first downs. So Arizona State needed to get on the board just to slow Texas Tech down, maybe get their defense a rest. Big kickoff by Brandon Ruiz and no chance to return it. First two games, opponents converting about 55% of third downs against the Sun Devils defense. Third and eight, and a conversion. And a run after the catch by Kiki QT. A strike over the middle, and then a few yards picked up after the catch to the Arizona, to the Texas Tech 47, that is. Three-man rush, too much time and space for Sheminek to find QT. 20 yards to Batson. Batson with another one of those stutter steps. Closed down fairly quickly after this one by the Arizona State defense, but a healthy pickup on first down. Those throws to Batson like that are nothing more than a sweep. And that's what uh, Cliff Kingsbury has done here in his four years as the head coach. And Nisby has a play fake that time. And QT runs under a tackle. Tavolatasi missed him. QT just able to go underneath, and then A.J. Watu catches him from behind. Well, the fun doesn't start for QT until he has the ball in his hands, and then it's just magic. Now, he is fantastic after the catch. Gain went for 24 yards into the red zone for Texas Tech at the 17, and he is running downhill. Desmond Nisby almost ran downhill all the way to the end zone. Taken down by DJ Calhoun inside the five-yard line. High tempo, first and goal from the two. And Nisby, the ball squirts out into the end zone, and it's still loose, and Tuttle Atassi is on it. It is a it's touchback, touchback if that indeed is how the play stands. Nisby was reaching out for the goal line, but the ball comes out, and right now the ruling on the first field in Arizona State. is touchback. Fumble recovery in the end zone for Tadalo Tossi. Yep. Well, it went through the end zone. And Isby got the ball pulled out as he was trying to stretch across the end zone. Trying to get the touchdown, the extra effort. Smart play by Tadalo Tossi, and this will get looked at. Let's see where Nisby's at. Is he ever across the line? Is he across the line as he... Tries to reach. Oh, now that ball's out of his hands as he's trying to reach it across. He's trying to reach the ball here with his left hand, and it cut. Yeah, the ball comes out. Now the scramble is on. Great shots here. Ball's out. Well, you're going to be tested with adversity in the game, and Texas Tech right now facing some after. The miscue on offense. Running play to start the series from the 20. Inside to Demario Richard, the senior from Palmdale, California, hometown of Paul George of the NBA. Yeah. D. Rich, a guy that has been banged up this year. They're excited about seeing him. That play, Eli Howard kind of stuffing it. So far, Texas Tech run defense has been good up front, and that's what they were trying so hard to rebuild here. Wilkins on second and seven. Got the ball out quickly and then thrown down short of the first down. The catch is made by Nikhil Harry. Good coverage and tackling in the open field by Octavius Morgan. Yeah, Octavius Morgan, one of those Juco transfers from Butler Community College. Luke Wilkins has a good arm, though. You can see it. It's powerful. The loudest I have heard it here at Jones a &T Stadium in a long time. Third and fourth throw, and it's caught 
on the move and brought down out of bounds. Nicely done by Kyle Williams, who caught the touchdown earlier in the second quarter and just dragging across the middle and then room to run after the catch. Well, he got great protection that time. Manny Wilkins able to stay in the pocket, didn't have to bail, didn't have pressure on his face, allowed Kyle Williams to come underneath on just what they call a shallow cross in his offense. Offensive line looks like they're settling down just a little bit. Watch the protection here. A.J. McCollum back at center. Good pickup here by Nick Ralston. Play action. Wide open. Harvey. Jalen Harvey. First down and more. Down near the red zone for Arizona State. Well, Jalen Harvey was in motion that time, and he became the safety valve. Here's the hit out of bounds. Oh, wow. What a hit by Kyle Williams wow. on Octavius Morgan. Receivers blocking good tonight. Went for 15 yards and a bullet and caught by Harvey, who just caught it a moment ago, and down to the one. Jalen Harvey, back-to-back -back catches, and Arizona State on the lip of the cup. Yeah, and... Wilkins is getting hot. The ball's coming out fast, and they've reshuffled this offensive line. They're giving him some protection now. Hand off to Mario Richard on first and goal. He's in. Touchdown, Arizona State. They have been given a boost, Brian, by miscues by Texas Tech. But Todd Graham at Arizona State will be happy to receive well, those gifts and turn them into positive plays. A, a clear 14-point turnaround from Desmond Nisby's fumble going into the end zone and then driving the 75 yards coming back. And D. Rich finishes the drive with a good spin and his first touchdown of the season. Arizona State is six for six in the red zone scoring touchdowns this year. And Arizona State over the last 15 games has scored on 49 of their last 53 red zone possessions. They're within four after the short run by Richard. And Arizona State's offense after the first four drives only 31 total yards, 155 on the last two. The first of those two. A lot of penalties by Texas Tech. Touchback for Kiki QT. Back to throw. And a long bomb. And QT catches it. Kiki QT, a huge gain. Got behind Kobe Williams. And the ball is all the way down. Inside the Arizona State, 30 at the 27. Well, we said that QT was their clear number one receiver. And he's putting on a show here tonight. This is underneath to Justin Stockton, the running back. Stockton hit pretty hard at the 25-yard line. 48 yards a moment ago to Kiki QT. Well, you do with, with no safety in the middle of the field. What you do is you throw it to a patch of grass and let the receiver go get it. That's a great throw by Shimonek. So many guys underthrow that ball and allow the defender to catch up to it. Had a couple of really good deep balls tonight. The touchdown pass to Cantrell, remember that. High pass to caught Kiki QT on second down and six, has the first down. Out of bounds at the 15 of the Sun Devils, brought down by Christian Sam. At the six, at the 14, beg your pardon, Trey King has his first carry of the game. Trey King, a junior transfer from Hutchinson Community College in Kansas, is stopped around the 10 by Shannon Foreman for Arizona State. Well, we're gonna, we said we're going to see a lot of running backs for Texas Tech, and they all do something a little bit different. Trey King with that, that run off left tackle behind Jacob Hines and Madison Akamanu. King ran the ball four times in the opener. That's his first carry tonight. It went for four yards from the 10. Play action. And it is caught at the five-yard line. And fighting into the end zone is big running back Mason Reed. Touchdown, Texas Tech. Shimonek really did a great job of selling the run fake and getting it out to Mason Reed, who is somewhat of even a fullback here at Texas Tech, something that they rarely even have. Again, great blocking on the outside. 
That time, good blocking from his other running backs there in the play. Mason Reed, a transfer from Cisco Junior College on I-20 between Abilene and Fort Worth. And his touchdown from Nick Shimanek, 10 yards, fourth touchdown pass of the night, extends the Texas Tech lead back to double digits, 28-17. And Cook told us that you can improve accuracy through repetition. He said his quarterbacks get more reps than any other group out there playing college football. Chance to return this kick for Kalen Balazs. Trying to bust through that seam, but can't. Down he goes at the 26. Danny Wilkins trying to answer that score right now with 3.23 to go here in the half. Arizona State has two timeouts. Balazs will catch it out of the backfield. Wow. And Balazs showing off the high hurdles. <laughs> Bumped down by Douglas Coleman. Wow, he went airborne like that. Uh, he is, I mean, he's every bit of 230 now. Solid as a rock. We've seen him blocking, receiving, tough in the sparky formation. That play went for eight yards. Here's Kyle Williams. Williams and it's Deshaun Johnson who hangs on to him. Well done in the open field by Johnson, the Texas Tech defensive back. We're talking to David Gibbs, and he said, Deshaun Johnson wants Caleb Lodge, seven on seven. He wants it from last year, a little payback. It's good to see Deshaun back out there for this defense. Picked up a little bit earlier. There's Belage, so seven on seven. Will they meet here soon? Arizona State has converted half of their third downs tonight. They need 11 yards. Motion for Kyle Williams, who has a touchdown catch tonight. It's an open space to Nikhil Harry. But that space is closed down very, very quickly. You saw how many white shirts went to the excellent wide receiver, Nikhil Harry. Tony Jones among them, and well short of the first down. Well, they rallied to the football, and that's exactly what David Gibbs wants. You're going to see a whole lot of white jerseys and helmets on their whiteout day. Get to Nikhil Harry, make sure that he doesn't get that first down. And that's that's the type of energy that David Gibbs has been wanting his defense to play with for a long time. And it's a punt, punt. Sleep Dalton has the punt block. And it was almost caught in midair by Reed. It is picked up and recovered by Texas Tech. J.D. and High looks like he was the player that came on a middle rush and blocked the punt by Michael Sleep Dalton. Well, J.D. and High is it is a wide receiver and if you can't get your passes because somebody else is you got to make something else happen he was unblocked i was unblocked on the play they just let him come free i mean sleep dalton didn't have a chance nope there was only a three-man rush The senior wide receiver from Hereford, Texas, blocks the punt and eventually recovered by Dante Thompson for Texas Tech. 58 seconds left and a half, two timeouts for the Red Raiders. A special teams play puts them at the 27 of the Sun Devils. And Simonek is grabbed by Jojo Wicker. Some after Jojo Wicker had a chance to go to Texas Tech. They were hard after him in recruiting, along obviously with Arizona State and USC and other Pac-12 schools. I just beats Terrence Steele, the right tackle, turns the corner. He's from the, the high school powerhouse of Long Beach Poly. Gets his first sack of the season. Just a four-man rush. They help him to pick up the slack of the injury to Karan Crump. That's a huge play for the Sun Devil defense. Bill Bennett's got to love that. It's last a loss thing you want, of seven last yards. Thing you, yeah, last thing you want, Mark, after that block punt is a real big play on offense, and they stopped it to slow him down. Clayton Hatfield's longest career field goal is 51 yards. 
So bear that in mind, given that they're snapping it at the 34. Justin Stockton, fall off a tackle, stepped out of bounds. Christian Sam is back in. Remember, he limped off earlier in the second quarter, but back on the field and yeah. part of forcing him out of bounds. Yeah, he wasn't limping there, Mark. Nope, he was in full gallop. Just eating up some grass, chasing down Stockton that time. Four yards picked back up on the short pass play. Texas Tech tonight is two for three in third down situations. Audible call that time from Kingsbury. Third and 13. Caught at the 20 yard line, looking for blocks. Cameron Batson has blocks, but mostly he did it on his own. First down, Texas Tech on third and 13. Leslie McCaslin asked Cliff yesterday, who's your fastest player? He didn't hesitate. He said Cameron Batson. And he showed it, not just the speed, but the quickness as well. Juking defender after defender. Picked up 16 yards. <laughs> Texas Tech is out of timeouts. They throw it at the 14. And it is complete to Dylan Cantrell. Number two in the end zone tonight for Cantrell. Let me give you some highbrow commentary here, Mark. They can throw and catch it real well here at Texas Tech. This is a great throw by Shimonet. Back shoulder, but look at the catch by Cantrell. He turns his body around. Joey Bryant, who's in pretty good coverage. Great hands by Cantrell. Nick Shimonek threw for 384 against Eastern Washington before leaving the game. When it was safely tucked away, tonight he has thrown for 318. Texas Tech will go into the locker room leading 35-17. Here's Leslie McCaslin. Thanks, guys. Well, a block punt and a touchdown. How big was that in changing the momentum of this game? That was huge. We gave them one up that we should have put in. We were challenged for the football. We've been sloppy on offense, but defense playing well. What do you think about the way Nick Shimanek, though, has worked his string of things? That's what he does. I mean, uh, we watched it there in practice. He's just got to keep being consistent. All right, thanks, Clay. The orchestration that Leslie was talking about is 318 passing yards out of an offense that's gained 365 yards in all. 35-17, Texas Tech over Arizona State. Next, it's the College Football Halftime Show with Rob Stone, Robert Smith, Dave Wanstead, and Matt Liners. Fox College Football, live from Jones AT&T Stadium in Lubbock, Texas. Texas Tech Red Raiders 35, Arizona State Sun Devils 17. But Brian Baldinger, I'm Mark Falwell, and we saw a first half with a lot of offense. Of course, reminiscent of what happened last year when Arizona State won 68-55. But Texas Tech certainly has grabbed the bull by the horns, uh, proverbially speaking, here through the first 30 minutes of the game, Brian. Nick Shimanek is putting on his show. I mean, there's no other way to say this right now. He's been sensational. He's, he's missed four passes. Two of them were drops. And the stat says, says it all. I mean, 335 total yards. They've had seven possessions, five of them touchdowns right now. So it is all Texas Tech offense. And really the story for the second half is how does Arizona State slow this offense down? Easier said than done, certainly for Todd Graham and particularly defensive coordinator Phil Bennett and the staff of the Sun Devils. And perhaps with some more insight on that, we now hear from Leslie McCaslin. Leslie. Well, guys, I talked to Todd Graham coming back on the field, and I asked him what adjustments he wants to make. He said, we've got to stop them. But he also mentioned all the things that have gone wrong for them in the first half. Of course, the block punt, the bad snap. He said there's been so many things, but he said right now we're throwing on the perimeter. He said we've got to attack them on offense. And, guys, I just love this from Manny Wilkins, their quarterback, coming back on the field, such a leader, yells at his team, stay poised, everybody, do your job. That's what you want from your quarterback. We'll see what they can do here in the second half. Like Leslie said about what Todd Graham said, they got to stop them on defense. One of the top one or two high school recruits as a kicker in the nation. The running back is Justin Stockton. He carried more than any player for Texas Tech in the first half with just five rushes for him for 27 yards. Backpedaling and throwing it away to start the second half is Nick Shemenek. 
That's sort of how the game started. Remember, remember that Jimenek had two incompletions to start the game. Well, one was a drop, but this one was a throwaway, so you got to factor that in when you look at the stats. There's nobody home, and he saves the negative play by getting rid of it once he's outside the pocket. He was under duress from Jojo Wicker. Yeah. Wicker had a sack late in the first half. Sure did. Here he is. Defensive tackle inside, experienced player. Trying to get some push on that pocket. Another experienced player alongside him on the defensive line, Tayshawn Smallwood. Tayshawn Smallwood hasn't missed a game. 41 straight at Arizona State. Long pass oh. play. And once again, a fantastic link-up between Shimanek and Cantrell. Another back shoulder throw against Joey Bryant. The catch is unbelievable. He actually pins this ball, I think, against his helmet here to secure it. Oh. It's just a one-handed catch. Hey, Cole Beasley, you got some competition, baby, what? with a catch like that. He caught that right beach wedge between his hand and his shoulder and his helmet. Career high in receiving yards for Cantrell with the 115 this evening. And a great grab just accounted for 29 of them. And they will throw it right back his way when you make a catch like that, throw it to the sure-handed Cantrell again, and that's what Shimanek does. Bumped out by Chase Lucas. First down on the gain of 11. You know, the thing about Shimanek here is his location. The location is away from the defender on all of these throws. These are stick throws away from the defender where only his guy can get it. DeMarcus Felton in motion. Hands it off to Stockton. A.J. Latu with the tackle. They have so many different speeds that they can play at. Well, this looks like warp speed right now. Faked it to Stockton. Shimanek stays in and takes a big hit. It goes for the end zone. It's incomplete for Batson. Well, this might be one of those one-word plays where everybody just knows what they have to do. And this is what Shimanek did in order to get the ball down the field. He stayed in there and took this hit from Smallwood. The fans are booing because they thought Batson was interfered in the end zone, but no call. Third and eight. In the first half, Texas Tech averaged to play every 18 seconds. They really went into overdrive a moment ago. But run the play clock all the way down to one. Here comes the blitz. Shimanek oh. got it away. Kiki QT makes the catch, but that is an outstanding tackle. Chad Adams didn't miss a tackle in the first two games of the year, and he brings down QT short by a yard. That's an unbelievable throw by Shimanek to complete that ball. And it's Stockton headed outside. He's in a lot of trouble and nowhere to go. A big hold by the Arizona State defense. Adams and Jamarcus Rhodes string the play out, and they hold Hold on fourth down. Big play by the defense. And I said that's the weakness of this offense is they don't have a power run game. And really, they took Nisby off the field after the fumble. That's where he should have been. He should be in on this play. They're running wide here. And you can just see Arizona State's got him out flank. And really, Stockton never had a chance. That's a great stop by Arizona State. Phil Bennett's got to feel pretty good exhorting his crew on the sidelines after that one. Play fake to Kalen Milaj. Arizona State from their own 27. And a long heave to Kyle Williams. A beauty of a throw, and Williams tucks it in for the catch from Manny Wilkins. Manny Wilkins said, hey, I can throw it deep, too. Just not Texas Tech quarterbacks. And first play they get in the second half, they launch one to Kyle Williams, who got behind the secondary. Good protection. A really good job by Manny to, to maneuver through the pocket to find that opening to launch it. Went to the 19, 54 yards. Running play up the gut for Kalen Balaj. Balaj now 42 yards rushing the ball tonight. Here's Kyle Williams waiting on this. Octavius Murray there. Or Morgan. On the tackle. Kept this time by Wilkins and room to run. He'll Smart. slide with the first down, Brian. Manny, Smart. Smart play by Manny Wilkins that time. Keeping it and then getting down before the middle linebacker, Jordan Brooks, could put a hit on him. 
Real smart protecting himself. First and goal of the eight. Wilkins. Quick throw. Nikhil Harry. Harry is just short of the goal line. Octavius Morgan kept him out of the end zone along with Vontae Dorsey. That's a good tackle by Morgan saving the touchdown. Because he's got a little interference on the outside here. And Harry's about 220. Good job, Morgan, staying on her and getting him down. Second and goal inside the one-yard line. Belage and Belage. Second effort. That's a big back. That's a tough back. And Kalen Belage is in the end zone for the first time tonight. That's a great drive. I mean, that's fast. That's Texas Tech-like fast. Taking it right down the field after the fourth down stop. And you can see Caleb Balazs was stopped and hit behind the line of scrimmage and kept that big, powerful body going. In 2017, Arizona State has gone to the red zone seven times and scored seven touchdowns when they've gone into the red zone. Balazs from a yard out. Remember, this started whatever Arizona State's defense held on fourth and one. 35-24, Texas Tech on Fox College Football. I'm speaking your language right there with Buddy Holland, Oh, no right? doubt, man. No doubt. So many great songs, and Arizona getting back in this game. Great drive by the offense, engineered by Manny Wilkins. He got the defensive stop, went right down the field, got themselves right back in this game. Arizona State is trailed by as many as 18. Sun Devils now down by 11. Shimanek. Oh, and a little pop pass over the middle. Mason Reed, second catch tonight. We call the pop pass. <laughs> We're seeing it all here. The old pop pass to the fullback tight end. Got behind the second level. Went to for 16 yards. Now rolling and throwing and juggled and dropped. Kiki QT, who has 128, 135, I'm sorry, receiving yards tonight. He only drops the easy ones. Kobe Williams there in coverage. And QT comes right, right back. That's just the seventh incompletion and 32 throws tonight for fifth-year senior Nick Shimanek. Second career start tonight. Transfer from Iowa. Shovel pass. Justin Stockton. Stockton. First down. And a touchdown saver, perhaps, by Desmond Tadalatasi. What a call. What a call. They sucked that defensive line up. Looked like they were going to get a pass rush. And then shoveled the old sucker punch here. Boom. A perfect execution. Dry started at the 25. Has covered 47 yards. And this one may cover the final play. Derrick Willies, touchdown, Texas Tech. The sixth touchdown pass of the day. For Nick Shimanek was off a double move here of Derek Willies. You're going to see it on the outside against Tato Latasi here, the safety. You can see he bites up. Perfect move. And Willies, who's been instrumental in blocking for touchdowns, gets his first touchdown of the day. And Shimanek is, I don't even know how to describe what he's doing out here. Second touchdown reception of the year for Derek Willies last year against Arizona State. Yard touchdown reception. This one is just about half of that from 28 yards out. Shimanek to Derek Willies, and they celebrate pushing that lead back to 18 points here in Lubbock, Texas. How many back shoulder throws have been a bunch? I mean, spot on tonight for Nick Shimanek. Running up the field with Milaj, caught it just outside the five. J.D. and High, who had the block punt wow. that was a big swing in the first half late at the end with the special teams tackle. Now Wilkins back at quarterback and just has to throw it to the feet of Demario Richard. The pass doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage, but there was a receiver in the area. Willie Sykes was breathing down the neck of Wilkins. Yeah, Willie Sykes with some penetration there. Just forcing that Aaron throw, and all Wilkins was trying to do was 
just get rid of the ball, get to second down. Sykes, a transfer from Arkansas. He had a pick yeah. against Eastern Washington two weeks ago. Sure did. Good middle linebacker out here. Watch for that blitz right now from Jordan Brooks. Wilkins from the 36. And oh. down to Nikhil Harry. We've seen accuracy tonight out of Nick Shimanek and a bullet throw on target by Wilkins to Nikhil Harry. Well, he had to really rifle that ball in into a zone coverage. Quick hands by Nikhil Harry to bring that ball in. From the Arizona State 36 to the Texas Tech 36. Harry again. And Harry able to fight off Deshaun Johnson. It will be second down and five at the Texas Tech 31. Erase the penalty, and it's room to run. Wow, absorbing a hit is Demario Richard. Deshaun Allen tried to put the hurt on Demario Richard, but Richard stands tough. Well, Deshaun Allen is from the same high school as his coach there out of Mesquite, Texas. That was a good hit by Deshaun Allen to get Richard down, who's a big back, 220 pounds. Got a compact frame. Best run of the night for D. Rich. To the 21. Wilkins is keeping, and that's a lateral, and it is caught and scooting down the sideline and into the end zone, Frank Darby. Statistically, that should go for a run, a rushing touchdown for Darby, the redshirt freshman. Well, it's thrown as a lateral. It's a read option. Wilkins has the ball, and then his third option is to get the ball out to, to Darby which he does, and it's a perfect point guard play. You're gonna get the fake in here, you're gonna come outside right now. Now, he looks like a runner, but he puts the ball in his right hand, brings three Texas Tech defenders to him, and then Ryan Jenkins throws the final block for Darby to find the end zone. Nicely done. How much did Todd Graham this week when we talked to him speak about execution? How well is this play executed? The lateral to Frank Darby. He goes into the end zone from 21 yards out. It's an 11-point game. Big kick by Brandon Ruiz. It's a touchback. Shimanek with a lot of time. Kiki QT comes back for it. And tries to sidestep Devonte King. Now, a little comparison between last year and tonight. Texas Tech threw for 540. They're 100 yards away right now. Last year, the two teams combined for 123 points. Brian pointing out during the break, they are 50 points still away from that tonight. First down of the 40 and wasting no time. Floats it out, caught by Kiki QT. Out of bounds right at the first down marker. Words with Devontae King afterwards. He's a tough guy to get down to the ground, man. He, he's got something special after he touches the ball where he can just keep the play alive. So sudden. They, they watch a lot of tape of Antonio Brown and how he catches the ball and what he does after it. I think some of it's starting to run off. Nine for 160 tonight. And Shimanek under heavy, heavy pressure. Just unable to complete it to Dante Thompson. Meanwhile, Abe Thompson, who's getting some snaps, because remember in the first half, Karan Crump went out for the Arizona State defensive line, and Abe Thompson is one of the players absorbing those snaps with Crump yep. out of the game. They don't play a lot of people on defense. These guys get a lot of snaps, but they're getting into their depth, and there's Karan Crump now, and it's just a... Sad to see him on crutches. I hope he gets back soon. One of the best pass rushers in the Pac-12. Shimanek to Kiki QP. This will tie his best in terms of receptions in a game. That is number 10 tonight. Yeah. Well, At 10 last year in a game against Oklahoma. You know, Mark, the, the, the key to... It's one thing to complete a pass. But when he keeps putting it in location, where the receiver doesn't break stride, and then you get the yards after the catch, that's a big function of what these receivers are able to do. 168 receiving yards for Kiki QT, the junior from Lufkin, Texas. By tech standards, uh, maybe a, you would call this a glacial pace on the drive for the Red Raiders. Up 11, down to 320 left in the third quarter. Third and two. 
Shimanek buys time. Under pressure before he threw it away from Christian Sam. All right, here comes the field goal team for the first time tonight. Would extend the lead to 14 points if Clayton Hatfield, who's made 90% of his field goal attempts over the last two seasons. 27 out of 30. Shouldn't they get a good job of just keeping that play alive and just dumping that ball so it wasn't a negative yards and make this an easier field goal attempt. And by the way, it's not Hatfield kicking. Now, Hatfield missed the first game with an injury. He's kicked tonight, but Michael Barton is going to be called on to kick. And Barton handles it very nicely. Field goal made by Michael Barton. He's kicked a handful of field goals in his time at Texas Tech. And being pressed into action, nails that one from 39 yards out, 45-31. From the goal line, Balage. Senior from Peyton, Colorado. Needing four yards and throwing and caught. Morgan was right there stride for stride, but just a turn back and adjustment made by Nikhil Harry. It was what they call a 50-50 ball. Either guy could have had it, but Harry had his eyes on it first. This is uh, nothing but low post basketball here. Just getting his big body in front of Morgan's big body and shielding. Nice touch by Wilkins. That went for 16 yards to Nikhil Harry. His 10th catch tonight. Big arm, but too tall for Jalen Harvey on the throw down the seam. Deep over the middle by Wilkins. Well, Wilkins is getting time right now. He's got time to scan the field, get the ball out. That man, Billy Napier, spent the last five years coaching wide receivers at Alabama. He was telling us about he learned more from Nick Saban in one year than he learned in the previous 10 years combined. After the incompletion, second and 10. And this is the 11th catch of the game. Just put up with feathery touch. It floats down to Nikhil Harry, and he's bumped out of bounds ultimately by Douglas Coleman. Well, he was so up because the corner fell down on the outside, and you're going to see it right here. Little jam right there, and Morgan goes down. One thing about Nikhil Harry, he's got great body control. 26 on that play will put Nikhil Harry at 110 receiving yards in the game. Kyle Williams comes back for the catch. And he's wrestled down by Jalen Lane. But another first down, Arizona State crisply moving on offense here late in the third quarter. And it's all Wilkins. I mean, he's, he's throwing every type of ball you can get right now. Wonder if Texas Tech is starting to get a little bit tired here. Been on the field a lot. To the sideline to Harry. And he makes sure to pick it up. I don't think it was a lateral. It should be an incompletion, but smart decision by Harry to ensure that nothing disastrous happens. Yeah, he just simply took his eyes off it. One of the few drops by him tonight. And he's been impressive. 11 for 110 for the sophomore from Chandler, Arizona. Led Arizona State in receiving last year in the game with Texas Tech, catching six for 72. Kept by Manny Wilkins. Wilkins will slide inside the 10. Kept himself away from a big hit from Jordan Brooks. Yeah, well, it wasn't all the hit because he does a good job of just sliding here and protecting himself. Still takes a shot from yeah. Brooks. Wait, I, I, take, I take it all back. He took a hell of a shot yes, from, he did. from Brooks. Even though the angle of the slide was carrying him away from the pursuit of the defender. Brooks still got his shot in against Wilkins. Now third and three at the 10. Juggled and caught Kyle Williams racing for the end zone. He's in. It's a seven point game if they make the extra points. What an effort by Wilkins to keep that play alive. Gets up a little limpy but Kyle Williams is putting on a display too. In a game where so many wide receivers are having big games, Kyle Williams is right there with the best of them. There's a little flare out of the backfield. Stiff arm here to Sean Allen. 
He gets hit another touchdown catch here this evening. There are four receivers in the game tonight with at least 110 receiving yards. Harry and Williams for Arizona State. Kiki Cutie and Dylan Cantrell for Texas Tech. Well, this uh, run pass option offense that they have is being pretty well executed right now. Yes. And execution was a word that was mentioned frequently this week when we chatted with Todd Graham, Arizona State's head coach. Breakout game was another term that he used. 37 seconds left in the third quarter. Here is Leslie McCaslin. Leslie. Well, guys, they believe Kyle Williams is one of their best skill players. And with John Humphrey out this week at wide receiver, they said he would get more playing time. They wanted to give him more opportunities. But get this, he actually moved over from DB in the spring. Hadn't been a wide receiver since high school. And clearly, he's making the most of that opportunity he got this week. Seven catches, 111 yards. Now the Texas Tech offense on the field. Good shot there as Shimanek in shotgun behind. An offense line has played pretty well tonight. Both teams have one turnover tonight. And also on special teams, Texas Tech has blocked a punt. Pitch and catch to Kiki QT. I bring that up, Brian, because one, as you go into the fourth quarter and with offenses chewing up yards mm -hmm. at another uh, electric pace tonight, you just wonder, will a defensive play, a turnover force? Yep. Well, some, uh, Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury has told us many times here, it, it comes down to turnovers and the turnover ratio. And that separates a lot of these games that are these shootout type of uh, performances that we see. It's like they're going to be content to run this quarter out. There it is. The third quarter ended with the drive by Arizona State. And then Texas Tech with one last snap, an eight-yard pass play to Kiki QT. Do not go anywhere. We have a thrilling 15 minutes coming your way of Fox College football. Red Raiders at home up by seven. To start the fourth quarter, second down and two, and falling down after taking the handoff is Desmond Nisby. A crowd of over 58,000 watching tonight in Lubbock, Texas. 45-38, Texas Tech leads Arizona State. We have started the fourth quarter. Not really a smooth handoff between Shimanek and Nisby that time. Lucky that ball didn't get on the ground. Nisby has the only Texas Tech turnover tonight. A fumble in the second quarter. They'll have a shot at redemption after going down for no gain on the uh, not-so-smooth handoff between the two. They'll stay in the block. From the other side, Shimanek twirls and throws in desperation because of heavy pressure. And could not connect with Kiki QT. Well, Phil Bennett said, we're not going to sit back and just let Shimanek pick our team apart. We're going to make him get out of the ball, get the ball out of his hands fast. And you can see he comes after him with max pressure, and Shimanek's not happy with Kiki QT right there. He turned the wrong way to adjust to the ball. Nisby was able to pick up one blitzer, but DeMonte King came in without having a hand laid on him. Dominic Panazzolo from Adelaide, Australia. Punt back to Ryan Newsom. Newsom changing direction, running out of a tackle, and then leveled. Mason Reed is making his presence felt in numerous ways tonight. He's caught a touchdown pass and a bone-crushing hit on special teams by the fullback from Cisco, Texas. Yeah, and it's good to see Newsom get up from that hit just like that, too. Yeah, this Really picking things up on offense, and now a first down run and refusing to go down. Demario Richard finally goes down at the hands of four or five Texas Tech defenders. But this is a drive to tie the game early in the fourth quarter for Arizona State on the road. Well, Arizona State has been down as many as 18 points a couple of times today. And that's, you talk about playing up tempo, that's what it's been. Long drives under three minutes each. With a third and four. Kyle Williams, who's had a fine night tonight, is in motion. They will run the ball again. Kept by quarterback Manny Wilkins and hit low by Dakota Allen and hit high by Broderick Washington and stopped after a one-yard game. Kind of an odd call, I thought. And they got the running backs that Arizona State has. 
to keep it in Wilkins' hands. He's not a big guy. This is fourth and three at the Texas Tech 44 with 11.27 to go. An empty backfield. Manny Wilkins. Who will he go to? And it's Nikhil Harry. Absolutely no surprise nope. on who he goes to. And Harry with the catch to convert down near the 25. And it's just it's just his ability to use his big body. And the coverage is perfect by Jalen Lane. I mean, it's, it's right in the right spot. Everything about the coverage is good. The throw and the body by Nikhil Harry was the difference. It's officially to the 27, 17 yards for Nikhil Harry. Galen Balage gains five on a middle run on first down. Two fourth down conversions here to keep drives alive. One by that man, Balage. The other one by Nikhil Harry in the second half. Arizona State's three previous second half drives have all finished in the end zone. What will happen on drive number four? Big hit. Wow, Balage. Great train met him. Broderick Washington. Much bigger inside than they've been and deeper. Broderick Washington does a good job fighting off the block. From Longview, Texas. Yeah. 295 pounds. Yeah. And all of that force behind the hit delivered to Balage. The gain was one yard. Ten minutes left. Throwing slant. Caught. All kinds of room. Nikhil Harry. Touchdown. Arizona State. Caught one on fourth down to keep the drive going. Catches one on third down to put Arizona State a PAT away from a tie game. And that was a breakdown in the secondary. One of the few today for Texas Tech. There he is coming out of a bunch formation. You see nobody picks him up. Two guys run with the inside receiver, and that's why they went to the bunch. And Texas Tech broke down that time. Not a perfect snap, but everything handled nicely. Holder Josh Bacraca got it down, and it's set through by Brandon Ruiz. Here it is, 21 yards to Nikhil Harry. First time into the end zone tonight on his 13th catch of the game. Nick Shimanek is having an unbelievable night. His throw was 500 yards and six touchdowns, and none of that means anything. The pressure for the first time this year is on Shimanek to execute a drive to try and get this lead back. Seven for 141 tonight for Dylan Cantrell, and Nick Shimanek goes over 500 passing yards. 5-0-2. Very quick snap. They'll go to Stockton, and Stockton is wrestled down. Big man, JoJo Wicker at 273 with the tackle. Well, they said that both Wicker and Smallwood are big-time players in the Pac-12. They showed that tonight. They played a lot of snaps here tonight, too. Gain of a yard for Stockton on just his 11th run of the night. Play clock winding down. Great pocket. Shimanek. Good coverage. Flag comes in. Chad Adams, the defender against Kiki QT. That is only the third penalty tonight for Arizona State, which is what they average a game, third fewest in the nation. Well, you're going to see, I don't know, I mean, that, that looked like it was pretty good coverage by Adams on QT. Didn't grab him, didn't pull his jersey, just kind of running with him. The penalty will move the ball across midfield. Desmond Nisby at running back. And he'll have a chance for the 45. 
And another yard after all that contact to the 45. Mark, what's missing from this Red Raider offense right now is the tempo. I mean, they're just taking their taking a lot of time. They're not crisp right now. When that tempo is going, their offense really finds a different rhythm. They're going to try and capture here on this second down. Play clock at 15 seconds. Second and five, and it comes out quickly. And it's a strike to Dylan Cantrell. Cantrell against Chase Lucas out of the pattern, and Cantrell makes catch number eight tonight. And it's another one of those back shoulder throws here. Look at Cantrell adjust to that ball in the air. The coverage is good. The throw's better. Stockton running. Stockton stays on his feet into the red zone. And Stockton, the play finally stops around the 18-yard line. Brian, a phrase common in football these days with big receivers is catch radius. And that's what yep. Dylan Cantrell has, a very big catch radius. We just saw it a moment ago. Well, he's never been a 6'3". And those mitts of his, those hands, he touches the ball, he catches it. His best night ever as a Red Raider in his air raid offense. The running play by Stockton. Gained eight yards to the 17. Texas Tech over 600 yards of offense. And some more added on. Kiki QT, it will be first and goal. A pass and a run after the catch. 10 yards in all to the seven yard line. One of the things to consider right now is the clock. As it ticks under two minutes and 48 seconds, can they take more time off the clock? As you can see, they're slowing things down just a little bit, milking it some. I certainly do think that explains some of the easing up yeah. of the tempo for Texas Tech on this drive, which started after a hold by their defense and then the punt down to the 10-yard line. First and goal of the seven. Fade for Cantrell. Going up for the jump ball. Incomplete. Could not get a foot down inbounds against coverage of Kobe Williams. Good coverage by Williams. Just a two receiver out. Another unbelievable catch by Cantrell. You can see the left foot came down out of bounds. Well, Brian, we saw a Shaq versus Jackson State in a game we did two weeks ago and a Shaq last week. And the pistol in the backfield, Nisby and Stockton. And Nisby will run. And a little bit of wheel shown by the big man. An acceleration off the handoff to the three-yard line. And it's so important to remember the first half fumble by Nisby at the goal line. Right. The difference in this 45-45 game. What is Cliff thinking about here on this third down? Got to be thinking touchdown here. And remember, earlier, Michael Barton yep. attempted just his fourth field goal in three seasons here at Texas Tech. Clayton Hatfield was kicking earlier tonight. He's their number one kicker, but he did not kick in the first game due to injury. Wow. Great run formation with quarterback under center the first time tonight. And Mason Reed and Nesby in the game. situation and perfectly executed you never see a Texas Tech quarterback underneath the center power formation all the way the reverse to Cantrell and then what a night for Dylan Cantrell that's that's, that's all you got that's all you got Cliff that's that's your reaction Wow he knows there's a lot of work to do <laughs> Brian he's he's still you're right. 155 to go. The lead is 52-45, Texas Tech. What a performance by Dylan Cantrell. The senior receiver, 6'3", 220, has needed that 6'3 frame to catch passes and to stretch out there for the end zone. I mean, it was just an incredible effort tonight. We've seen him make some of the most difficult catches. Remember the catch against his helmet, yes. one-handed? I mean, unbelievable effort. So many players here tonight. Important kickoff by Michael Barton. And a lot of leg into it. Touchback, 25-yard line. 
And the rain has come back here. Yes. Out of nowhere. So, for the first time tonight, Manny Wilkins is going to have to deal with the wet football. Rain delayed and lightning and a bad thunderstorm delayed the start of the game an hour. There's a moderate shower falling now, and there's a pass that's completed on the first play of the drive. Arizona State needs a touchdown to tie the game. They're out of timeouts. That went to Jalen Hardy for 11 yards. Well, the 11 yards is key because it stops the clock while they reset the ball. Now it starts. At 1.40 and counting to Wilkins. Officially 12 yards on the play. High for Belage. Incomplete. Manny Wilkins in this game down 21 to 3 early down 28 to 17 all kinds of deficits have brought him back to tie it up and now trying to tie it up again but trying to do it without the luxury of a timeout out of bounds and first downs and incompletions their ways to stop the clock and wilkins with a rifle throw it went off the back of the defender it looks like justice parker was back covering Nikhil harry the go-to target for arizona state yeah. you see at, the, at the top here just an underneath coverage that time that two safeties deep so that's two deep man under Played that coverage perfect. From their own 32. Here comes the rush. It's a sack for the Texas Tech defense. Zach Barnes led the charge. Just a four-man rush by David Gibbs. He played the sticks that time, meaning he just kept everything in front of him. Once Wilkins pivoted and turned around, the rush got him. Now it will be fourth down, and a West Texas mile is what Arizona State needs. They're going to throw it deep incomplete. <laughs> Red Raiders fans are guns up here. Defense came up big the last two drives. Texas Tech wanted payback for what transpired in Tempe, Arizona last September, losing 68-55. David Gibbs said yesterday they watched that film because you are what you put on video, and the defense delivered two stops, Brian, yep. late in the game, forced a punt, follow that up with a winning drive, and then up by seven, a defensive stand in the waning minutes. Take nothing away from Manny Wilkins. Heck battle, of hard as, battle as hard as he possibly could. But this Texas Tech defense, they needed some success. They got it here. They're going to victory formation this. No timeouts. They can run this with one more snap. Cliff Kingsbury, his team is going to go to 2-0. and And he's told us yesterday, he spent a lot of time with the defense this year. He just thought it was important for his presence to be in there. He's got a good football team. His own players in exit interviews yeah. are some of the ones who told him it was important yeah. that he was in there. They will go to 2-0 and and a trip looming to Houston to play the Cougars in one more non-conference game next week. Texas Tech wins 52-45. We go down to the field to Leslie McCaskill. All right, well, we all want to know, quarterback under center, you run for your final touchdown. Where did that call come from? I stole it from the New Orleans Saints, actually. Yeah, I saw that. Dylan was hot. He's a big body. We knew if we get one-on-one, -on -one, he could get it in. You've wanted your defense to be better. You've been more involved over there. What did they show you in the final minutes? Uh, just hard. They got to uh, stop when they had to. We weren't able to get that stop last year. And huge stop, huge drive on the offense. We didn't play very well overall, but found a way to win. Nick Shimanek has had two starts in his career. What poise did you see from him down the stretch? Yeah, that drive is big time. That's that's a championship drive by a quarterback. And, and it's not only his second start, he's, he's got some real moxie. Okay, you were up 18. I know you're a perfectionist. What will be your words to them about finishing before next week at Houston? Yeah, we just got to do better. We have a chance to put a team away. We fumbled the end zone. We had a fourth and two. I made a bad call. We got to put them away. All right, thanks, Coach. Well, it took an hour.
to get started tonight an hour late because of a big thunderstorm but i do believe that it was worth the wait for everybody tonight in lubbock texas it's all great football we knew we would and we saw a lot of fireworks from ryan baldinger leslie mccaslin and our outstanding crew in lubbock texas i'm mark Ballowell. thanks for watching this has been a presentation of fox college football the final score tonight in lubbock texas 52 45 texas tech over arizona state